Yeah, so we have this JavaScript that we were working on for a while now. We actually came to a point where we started from scratch using a code for a different application. Now it's working okay. It's uh, 226 lines of code. We also have this Flask application Python code that's currently running locally. So that's what the front page looks like. The new feature is that it's also converting this uh, AG into sound. So that's how it sounds like when you scroll through this file, channel 7. So this is the whole segment it has a seizure in it on different channels. So this uh, channel 14 actually sounds more interesting. So that's what the uh, seizure sounded like. Kind of can hear what the, the difference between the uh, seizure and no seizure. But yes, it's not great. We'll be trying to improve it in the future. One of the problems, for example, for future improvement is the fact that the uh, wavelet denoising doesn't actually make uh, much difference. It doesn't make a difference at all for, in terms of the sound. It makes a little bit of difference. You can actually see the difference of it there. Yeah, this is two of them overlaid on top of one another. You can see it even more. And how different wavelets are doing. This one's giving an air why? Seems like by orthogonal. A 1.1 makes the larger difference. Yeah, if the trending is off, the filtering doesn't really work. There's also this crackling noise when nodes are changing. It's only happening when scrolling. We actually tried addressing it yesterday. So I'm wondering, wondering now if uh, a Python was the last code that was uploaded to ChatGPT. If, uh, if I ask any questions now, it will try and address them through Python code instead of uh, JavaScript. I don't know. There is a bit of crackling noise when nodes are changing. So when scrolling through the EEG file, there's some sort of uh, sound interference seem to be between the different nodes. Yeah, I think we checked it yesterday. It wasn't the buffering, but uh, something else. It's essentially now, um, I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, it's doing some sort of decay. So it's not just turning the note off when it's playing, but there should be a function for it. There should be some sort of delay. Hey, why don't I see that code? Actually unusual. It should be change in play frequency. This function. Yeah, this ramp. Right, yeah, this duration. Uh, so if I increase that. It's not working as expected. Make any difference? Yeah, we need to see for any magic uh, numbers. This duration is longer. Yeah, there is this crackling sound between uh, when scrolling. I think channel 14 or something had something more interesting. Yeah, well, I don't know 
know if you can hear this well, but yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that crackling sound between notes. So what could it be? Audio buffering issue. Yeah, we are using four is sine waves playing at the same time. So this tells you how the mapping is actually happening. Notes to play can go. Normalized power. What's the normalized power range of HD from 0 to 1? Should it? Based on the code. What normalized power range? Yes, yeah, so those numbers are way too small. Should have had the, the amplitudes as well. Numbers seem to be too small. If we adjust the maximum power to 2000 instead of 3000. So, yeah, this normalized power for delta band is uh, higher. And it's going up to 15k. But this number is very low. Right, so now it's uh, more sensitive and these numbers go, you get some larger, closer to one values as well. Right, so let me know is it better or not. It essentially became way more sensitive. It actually shows you the exact uh, mapping. It's reducing a maximum power from 3000 to 100. What will this do? Right, so it's not clipping in this particular case, but yes, it might clip if uh, other signals, I don't know, if this power goes higher than uh, this card is 20k. Right, yeah, they're definitely more noticeable. Using the maximum power to more realistic level, like 100 might provide normalized normalization that is more representative of the actual power distribution. Yeah, so this power distribution, the normalized power distribution is more realistic, yes. So that's what a uh, seizure sounds like on channel 15. Is it clip over there? I don't know, There's more power in there. I also try to see what effect window size has. Why is it only two powers? Ah, no, it is clipping. Right, so it is clipping on channel 14. This is the problem. Yes, when the mapping is uh, one, that means the normalized power is clipping. I don't know how bad is it, because it's still playing a note. And let's just double check it should be playing the highest note using index 36 playing as uh, c6 let's check the code using index 36 c6 yes yeah, so it's playing the highest note in the delta range it should be also playing the highest note in beta range in alpha range the mapping Power, the power, the normalized power is 0.57, which translates into G5. So G5 should be somewhere bang in the middle of uh, between E3 and E6. 
Anyway, reducing this max power. It's actually a magic number because it's not a maximum power. It's the maximum normalized power. Anyway, but it's resulting in um, normalized numbers between 0 and 1. So I have channel 7 as default. It's not the most interesting one. Uh, music wise 15 sounds a bit better let's try 30 and we haven't tried 30 so window size obviously matters a lot let's try 5 seconds Also use your keyboards. The other thing there's an obvious overlap. Yeah, they overlap quite a bit. That's the other problem. Yeah, we actually should have something that changes by how much uh, the scroll is moving. It should depend on the window size. So if we have the standard a 10 second anyway you can use your keyboard or mouse there is an overlap in the scrolling just kind of obvious we can change that so on one hand we want to keep as many things as default uh, as possible on the, on the other hand we want to give you more control over how this works so let me know what you think essentially all these variables they could be made hey can i find well, they're not constant, but they are, well, I call them magic numbers, but uh, let's see if it understands. Magic numbers uh, in programming is a numeric value that is used in the code without any explanation <laughs> of what it represents. That's right. Here's the magic numbers in the provided code. File scroller. Yes, this file scroller is important. We have the volume. The volume seems to be okay. Well, yeah. That's the one I can let you adjust, like the user to adjust. Actually, we might, that's probably not a bad idea. Duration, yeah, could let, uh, hey, we could have a slider for the duration as well. Ah, no, yeah, 10 is passing into base 10, so no, that is explainable. That's not magic. A uh, volume, duration is uh, our magic numbers. We can just let the user control those. Yes, 1000, if it's converting from seconds to milliseconds, it's not a, it's not a magic number as well, as we know why it's uh, 1000. Yeah, those are magic numbers. There's zero for min and max, uh, normalized power, minimum and maximum power values used for normalization. The 100 there is a magic number. That will be harder to explain. Why is it 100? Is that 11? Start note index. This is the index of the last node in the nodes array. Why? Well, because there's 11 of those. I don't know why there's 11 of those. You say 49. It's a constant used in a formula to convert a node to a frequency. Um, yeah, we'll figure. These three and one looks like magic numbers to me. That seem to just work. Yeah, we might add the volume and duration this stage. Let's see how all uh, channels uh, sound like. Yeah, I don't think we look at channel one as well. Yeah, it's not clipping if it sounds any better or worse. We also ideally have a selection of the musical instrument. Eventually we want to extract some other features, not just the a power in each frequency band and turn them into a map them into pitch and timbre. We might continue this next time. Let me know if there's any relevant questions. And I'll see you later. Bye.